The Lakers have managed to take a commanding 3-1 series lead over the defending champions in the Western Conference semifinals. The Lakers were thrown directly into the fire after the trade deadline, acquiring an almost entirely new roster and being forced to try and put everything together in time for a deep postseason run. Now they're on the cusp of advancing to the Western Conference Finals. They've been executing on the offensive end in a different way than we've seen LeBron James-led teams execute before, and it's managed to pick apart the Warriors' defense and allow them to consistently put up points even when their perimeter shots aren't falling. So let's talk about how they're doing it. First things first, we've got to talk about Anthony Davis. He's really only had one bad game so far in the series during Game 2, which coincidentally was the game that they've lost. But otherwise, he's been the dominant Anthony Davis that the Lakers needed him to be. And what's crazy is this dominance isn't even just coming at the rim. Anthony Davis has been shooting an impressive 48% from mid-range so far in the playoffs. What I'm about to tell you is even crazier. He's shooting a whopping 59% from the mid-range so far in the second round versus the Warriors over the span of these four games. From a points per field goal attempt perspective, 59% from mid-range is approximately 1.18 points per shot attempt. That's the equivalent of a player shooting 39% from three in terms of points per shot. These mid-range shots that Anthony Davis has been taking, he's making them at such a high level of efficiency that it's almost as good as a 40% three-point shooter in terms of value. And it's not like he's doing this on low volume from the mid-range either. Over the span of these four games, he's attempting 9.75 mid-range attempts per game. That's essentially 70% of all of his shots in this series. The mid-range is constantly considered a bad shot, and it's because guys usually aren't able to hit it at an efficient enough of a clip for it to be worthwhile, but when you can hit mid-range shots at an efficiency that makes them rival the efficiency of an elite three-point shooter, then all traditional calculus about the mid-range starts to go out the window. This starts to show up on the court when you start to get into how the Warriors are defending the Lakers' pick and rolls. On this possession, for example, D'Lo is going to come up and ghost the screen to get the ball from Reeves. AD is immediately going to screen for him, and look at Draymond. He's dropped towards the nail as D'Lo drives, with help coming from Wiggins and Curry towards the elbows. Now, D'Lo is going to feed AD on the short roll as he gets towards the nail. Draymond shifts directions, but he doesn't actually step up to guard AD. And even though Curry is showing a little bit at the elbow, it's just not going to be enough to come close to deterring Anthony Davis as he rises up for the shot. Now we can see what happens when the Warriors are overplaying the pass to AD on the short roll. Again, standard pick and roll with D'Lo rejecting the screen, but notice how far back Clay is hanging on D'Lo's drive, making sure that the pocket pass to AD isn't available. That makes it really easy for D'Lo to get into open space, forcing the closeout from Clay, and he uses the pump fake to spin for an open look. Now this philosophy doesn't just apply to pick and rolls. We can look at this drive from D'Lo over on the empty side. He beats Clay off the dribble, which forces the help from Looney, once again leaving the pocket pass open. Now this is where things start to get a layer deeper. AD has been drilling mid-range jumpers up to this point, so now that becomes a threat to the defense, meaning they have to consider the possibility that he might take a pull-up and not just try to get to the rim. Aware of this, he goes straight to the basket before the defense even has the chance to figure out what he's going to do. We can see again on this possession how the fact that the Warriors also have to worry about AD's mid-range scoring on top of his roll threat makes things infinitely more complicated. Dre wants to make sure that the pocket pass isn't there, so he's hanging around more towards the nail. But since they're sort of overplaying the pocket pass, this allows AD to go straight to the basket and then get the lob for the finish. Another major factor for the Lakers offense is the two-man game between LeBron and AD. Having two interior scoring threats that are able to execute actions inside the arc while the rest of the team is spacing the floor generates consistently good looks for them. For example, here's LeBron posting up with AD near the top of the key, and everybody else is going to be spaced out over on the weak side. When LeBron spins on pool, this is going to prompt Looney to commit to providing help, leaving Curry and Wiggins as the weak side help defenders. When AD dives to the paint, there's really not a whole lot that Steph can do to stop him from getting the pass, so AD is able to get a shot off despite Wiggins getting a contest up on him. 
Even if it's not one of the two of LeBron or AD scoring, their gravity and ability to alter the defense helps generate so many high percentage looks for them, particularly when they're running these snug actions, meaning actions that happen inside the arc, the defense is oftentimes put into some really difficult situations. They're gonna run this snug DHO, which leads into a pick and roll, and you can see Wiggins sink over a bit from the weak side, but this allows D'Lo to flare up above the break, and with the defense having been collapsed onto the AD LeBron two-man game, it's gonna lead to an open three. On this play, they're gonna get into a horns action and pay attention to how Reeves relocates to the top of the key after the screen, and AD is left as the only player inside the arc with LeBron. Curry is gonna get lost in the action, and Clay sinks towards the baseline to guard LeBron's potential pass to Vando in the corner, but what this does is leave D'Lo open on the weak side wing, giving the Lakers another free look from three. Perhaps the most interesting development of the playoffs for the Lakers has been how much more they're putting the ball in the hands of other guys on the roster and letting LeBron work as more of an off-ball threat or complementary playmaker. He's actually currently recording his lowest playoff usage rate ever, sitting only at 26.6%, beating his previous career low back in the 2011 playoffs. I think a big reason behind why they're doing this is because they have other effective offensive options that they can lean on, so they don't need to rely on just LeBron to do everything for them, which I think is a good thing considering it's probably more beneficial for them to conserve as much energy as they can for LeBron. For example, when he's not on the floor, the Lakers execute this action pretty frequently where they give AD the ball above the break, and they're gonna have Austin Reeves loop around D'Lo's defender so that he can set this flare screen for him to come up and get the DHO from Anthony Davis, forcing Wiggins to have to navigate two screens, which gives D'Lo the open look. This is gonna be a variation of the same play where Lonnie Walker sets a down screen for Schroeder to execute a get with AD, where he passes it to him and then comes to get the DHO from him. And Schroeder does some nice navigation with the screen to get to his spot for the pull-up jumper. Same situation here, except this time, Schroeder uses the handoff and screen to get downhill to the rim for the finish. Now, what's even more powerful for the Lakers is when they continue to use other guys as primary ball handlers and let LeBron work as an off-ball threat. This Ram action is a good example of how they're integrating him as more of a big man and screener, with Schroeder setting the down screen, allowing LeBron to come up and execute the pick and roll with Reeves, and then Reeves is gonna make the good pocket pass to him on the roll so that LeBron can get to the rim and finish. Even when he's not directly involved in a play, he can alter the defense while the rest of the team is executing. He's trying to fight for the post up here, but when he's able to get some separation from Wiggins and make the backdoor cut, Draymond drops to prevent it, allowing AD plenty of space to get into a mid-range rhythm jumper. Even putting him in sets as a spot-up shooter has been effective. They run this rip dribble handoff with Reeves screening Clay so that D'Lo can get the ball. And meanwhile, Vando is gonna be setting a screen on Wiggins so that LeBron is left wide open for a pass on the weak side wing, and he cashes in on the shot. Now this doesn't mean that LeBron can't execute with the ball in his hands, but I think a big difference now is that they're running more sets to create open looks when he is operating as the ball handler instead of just running pick and rolls and forcing LeBron to try and get downhill and collapse defenses so he can kick it out. That still works, but it also uses a lot more energy, whereas this conserves it a little bit more. And I also think it's harder for defenses to game plan for. Using him as an elbow passing hub creates opportunities like this one, where Reeves sets this back screen for AD to go baseline, getting AD a pretty favorable matchup against Curry, so it's relatively easy for him to get the finish at the rim. They're gonna run the same thing shortly after, but instead of LeBron getting it to AD on the backdoor cut, he gets it to D'Lo in the corner, and then D'Lo can attack baseline to slip it to AD, and he's gonna get the fadeaway jumper. This unique usage of LeBron James creates so many complications for the Warriors, a team that's already a little bit thin in regards to their defense. With Anthony Davis having one of the best mid-range shooting series I've ever seen from a player, and the supporting cast working seamlessly to execute on a consistent basis even when their three-point shots aren't falling, as long as they can close out this series, they're going to be heading into the Western Conference Finals with a really sound game plan regardless of who they face. Huge thank you to all of my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. That's the number one way to support me and help me continue making content. 
If you want to help support the channel further, you can click the link in the description to become a patron. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.